What is up guys, it's me, Ubisoft13, and I'm back with another 3D modeling video. Um, so this will be part of my 3D modeling uh, video series on my YouTube. So uh, this is to showcase you to you guys my uh, 3D modeling stuff, you know, from characters and whatnot. Um, so this is one of those ZBrush time-lapse sculpting videos. Uh, so it's always... It's always good to upload different kinds of videos in YouTube, so there's a variety. Um, so you guys won't get bored with the content that I uh, pretty much shoot and edit and upload for you guys, okay? So you guys won't be just expecting, you know, mask videos, tutorial videos, short films even, you know. You guys will also be seeing videos like these in my YouTube every now and then, okay? Um... I'm getting that part of life where I'm about to finish college and I'll enter the industries, the CG industry soon. So I want to try to balance how I work as an artist, um, both digital and um, traditional art wise. The traditional art being my masks and film making, I guess, while the digital side is obviously 3D modeling. Okay? So I'm trying to balance that and it's really hard. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a bit struggling. But, you know, it's something that I have to get used to, alright? So, I pretty much have two identities. The first, I, the first identity is obviously the one that you guys all know. And that's the Evil Saw 13 Modern Fiction Caparis identity. That's the identity in which I make masks and videos for you guys. The other identity is the identity that I will use out there in the industries. And pretty much out there in the... Out there in, you know, Los Angeles or wherever it is I work and that's my digital art side so pretty much what you guys are about to see right here that's the identity that I'll be showing to them okay but yeah um, Evil Saw 13, Juan Fisher, Capar Juan Fisher Caparis that's done in my personal time whatever it is I do out there in the industries is purely just for getting you know stable in life getting enough money each week or every other week or every month enough to support myself and my family if I ever if I ever will have a family <laughs> you know so yeah um, I will become a CG artist soon I'm a CG artist in the making and a visual effects artist they're practically the same to, uh, to an extent but anyways yeah here is legitimately my first character model that I've created in my own time um, his name is Edward Skinner Gennard, as you all as you all have read in the title of this video. This this character has nothing to do with my class projects and whatnot. So this character is the first character that I've done in my own time. Um, so let me just get it out of the way. This took probably about two weeks to do. Um, it took me quite a quite a long time to actually do the basic mesh. Because usually when you guys are doing the basic mesh in Maya, in which I will show you guys in a sec, uh, that will actually, that's pretty much, you're pretty much concepting your idea. You know, you're, you're pretty much roughing it out. Um, and most of the time, whatever it is you make in Maya will not look like that. And I will show you guys that as well. So you guys will see the evolution of this design. Alright. I will also be showing you guys a new program later on, at, mostly at the end of the video. Um... What else should I say? Oh, um, when it comes to my 3D modeling videos, do not expect, I, I do not expect from you guys to watch every single minute of it because it is pretty long. Because remember, I'm pretty much compiling all of the stuff that I did for this character. Um, if it, if it takes days, weeks, or even months, you know, which I doubt, I'm pretty much compiling all those time-lapse videos to show for you guys. And as you all know, I like to talk about the work that I'm doing, you know, so you guys may, may even learn something new as well. So I will do some commentaries on those as well. So you're not, you guys aren't just seeing the time lapse sculpting video. But, well, that's what everyone tends to do. I've noticed in YouTube when it come, when they do ZBrush time lapse, they don't do any commentaries on it. So it's a bit boring to watch. All right. So I will talk to you guys um, about the process while I'm sculpting the time lapse, all right? Um, also, uh, there will be chapter skips on the description below. Um, this will divide it from, you know, the base mesh part 
which I will um, go through after this intro. And there will also be so the sculpting and then the texturing and coloring and then the rendering turntables and stuff like that. All right. So please check out the chapter skips in the description below. I highly recommend it. Uh, remember, this is going to be a long video, so I do not expect you guys to watch throughout the whole thing. But if you guys do watch throughout the whole thing, well, I congratulate you. You have a lot of patience. All right. Um, and also in the description below, you'll, you guys will also see and read the character bio. So I do when I do characters, it's even masks. You know, I like to have some sort of story, meaning or symbolism behind it. So expect there to be character bios for all my character maulings from now on. And you guys can check that out in the description below. All right, so let's get to it. Um, so Edward Skinner Gennard, as of now, he is just a, um, he's just a character. That's all he is, he's just a character. He hasn't been rigged yet, but I will learn rigging real soon, okay? And if I, if, and if I do learn rigging, I'm gonna include him in my, um, in my demo reel. So I can pretty much incorporate him in a live action environment, okay? Because I do, um, character, character modeling is not the only thing I'm interested in. It's also, you know, compositing, you know, visual effects, implementing CG objects into an environment. All right, so let's get started. So why do I talk so much in, from, in, in the intro? I don't know why, but, you know, that's just my, my ritual on videos like these is, you know, just, just... Just to, you know, initialize things and start things out, okay? So what you guys are about to see right now is Maya. Alright, so what you guys are about to see now is Maya. So this is Maya. Um, I honestly don't know if you guys are... Um, if you guys can see the, the full document window. But if you guys can't, well... What the hell did I, did I just do? Uh, don't say... Okay, there you go. Uh, but yeah, here is Maya. Um, this is the character basic mesh. So this is pretty much Edward Skinner Gennard in his most basic and rudimentary form. Notice how he doesn't look anything like the finished character Maul that you guys saw at the intro of this video. And um, that's because this is just a rough mesh. Like I said in the intro, um, this is just concepting the idea, okay? When you guys are concepting something, you guys don't really finalize the look. Because the finalization, that usually happens when you're sculpting. You know, you tend to think of better things to execute, you know? Because when I, when I originally designed Edward Skinner Gennard, I wanted his mechanical, you know, mechanical legs to be just mechanical. Something happened in the process of sculpting that made me think, wait, what if I add some sort of organic element into it? So you guys will actually see that. But anyways, yeah, this is the basic mesh. Uh, this is this has not been UV'd yet because I can always UV it later on. All right. So let me show you guys the pieces. So this is the the face, the removable face. This is just an extraction of the polygons on the placebo face right here the placebo body so you got the face right there you got the body right here notice how he doesn't have any pants on because i don't know like i tend to, when, when i'm sculpting zbrush i tend to think of even more ways to bring this character to life and as you can see like i said this is just the most basic form okay and you got the mechanical backpack right here looking all basic so all it, all it is is just the bunch of shapes um when i was sculpting this or when i was modeling this i had to you, you have to realize if you're going to rig this it ha the movement has to make sense so notice how i actually have an axle right here like a real way to for it to move and i also got the turntables right here as i call them and these actually rotate so if you think about it this whole thing can move in any way you want it to you know, you even got the ball joint right there, which ends up being looking something extremely different from what it looks like now, where it's just, a, right now it's just a sphere. Um, and you know, yeah, you got the basic, you know, body of the leg right here. 
the claws which look very cubic it's not as sharp as as they as they look on the file render file version but anyways yeah this is the basic mesh um here's the topology you know i'm still working on topology for humans for organic stuff but i think i have a good start you know at least i have a, a solid knowledge of what makes good topology good topology but yeah that's it this is placebo by the way if you guys didn't know so i pretty much just imported him right there made the backpack the mechanical legs and then made the human face right there but yeah that'll be it for the basic mesh so now i will take these obj's i will actually export these uh, pieces out individually into obj's and then import them into zbrush and i'll start sculpting all right all right so we have now started initiated sculpting the mechanical leg uh i actually did this in class uh, i was waiting for the traffic to dumb down a bit so i, I ended up staying till 8 p.m at night um so i was sculpting this using the cintiq computers in in class and those computers are the best because they're actually a monitor that's touch screen so I can pretty much work it as if it was clay but anyways as you can see here I'm pretty much reshaping the mechanical leg and notice how I have no idea what I'm doing at the moment here and that's pretty much what happens when you're sculpting at least for me most of the time you don't know what you're doing and you end up making something else that's a lot cooler and I believe we just subdivided to subdivision 2 and notice the shape of the mechanical leg um, it's starting to take form of somewhat like a bone. Do you guys see that? Um, so it's it, it really brings out that aesthetic of this character that he's all about ripping the flesh out of people. And the fact that his mechanical legs shape are shaped like a bone, it adds on to the style of the character. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So here you go. See that ball joint that I showed you guys um, a couple minutes ago in Maya? that turn into somewhat like a like a, the tip of a bone you know so I'm pretty much you know sculpting that in and and this is the part where I'm tapering and smoothing out the mechanical side of th this leg and you guys have to realize all I have to do is sculpt one mechanical leg because I can always duplicate the uh... because I can always duplicate it for the, for the remaining and as you can see here, I'm making the claws more sinister instead of what I had in the basic mesh. The trick for the basic mesh is to, you know, model as much as you can. So, in low poly form. And I believe we subdivided a long time ago, I cannot remember. But yeah, here's the part where I'm adding the organic stuff. Check this out. So I believe I was using the clay buildup with an alpha on it so i'm getting that you know nice organic muscle tissue like stuff onto this mechanical leg now see the story of this guy is he you know what i want to explain the story later on but the fact you guys are probably wondering why is there organic stuff on this mechanical leg to keep things nice and short um, something happened to this character before he became like this and his one of his greatest experiments uh, which is a chemical that allows stem cells to uh, you know grow faster that spilt onto his mechanical leg um, contraption and what happened was as time went by, the that that compound that he made for stem cells to grow faster, it started to adapt within the metal of the mechanical leg. So that's why it has that look to it. All right, it will make more sense once I actually read the story to you guys at the end of this video. But yeah, so look at look how good look how it's starting to shape up, and that's the beauty about sculpting in ZBrush. Is, you know, you see the evolution, and you see the you see the hard surface as well for the mechanical leg notice how i smoothened out i polished the back plate and here i'm pretty much going over even more details 
you know making the details pop adding some things in there and stuff like that and I believe I'm still using the clay buildup brush the clay buildup brush is like great for um, you know for uh, roughing out but when it comes to the point where you're in the details I don't think clay buildup will do the work for you because it's it's really it's a really destructive brush to use to be honest and um as you can see here I'm pretty much um doing even more details I was thinking this part to be like the pipe I don't know what that I don't know why I did that design right there but it just looks good you know so I kept so I pretty much kept it like that and there you go I believe the bottom part is almost done just looks really beautiful with all those strands of flesh going on you know not to mention it's a mechanical leg in the first place so so I'm even adding more details the trick to adding detail is doing layer after layer over it and that's when they really pop out because all I'm doing right now is I'm just adding um what do you call it there's a pattern I don't know if you guys have been paying attention but there's a pattern in how I do the organic detail right here you know and once you got that pattern on sculpting you're pretty much well on your way to go so I'm even adding more strands for texture see see how there's see how it looks very muscle like you know and you guys also have to keep in mind when you're sculpting, even in clay, you have to combine adding clay and subtracting clay. I tend to add more clay, and that's a bad habit. So I cannot stress how awesome ZBrush is when it comes to this sculpting. It really feels like clay, I'll be honest with you guys. And it really practices my sculpting side. Even if it's not clay, you know, you're still training your that one part in your brain that's for scoping and there you go I believe we're done oh and uh, I added more added more added details on that part of the leg that you guys just saw I really don't like to see things blank unless if it's hard surface as you see right there and I also started um, I use I mean right now I'm using the Damien the Damien the damn standard brush that brush is pretty much mainly used for, you know, digging out deep crevices. As you can see right here, see how the details are now really popping up? That's because I'm using that Damien Standard brush. So I'm pretty much going all over that. And I also did that on around the, the plates of the mechanical leg. So you can easily so you can easily see the separation between the metal and the organic detail. The detail is actually pretty disgusting. Like, imagine seeing this in real life. It's just a big gunk of flesh. Like, it's not even flesh. It's like, remember, this is stem cells. If you guys don't know what stem cells is, stem cells, stem cells are. It's a type of cell that 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 um that people use or scientists use on a damaged organ in the human body, and it pretty much repairs itself. And as you can see here, um. I'll get to the stem cells later. Uh, as you can see here, I duplicated the legs, and I also extruded um, the joint on the left and right because someone um, told me that uh, it doesn't seem right if the legs are around or below his shoulders because how is he gonna do awesome attacks up front when the left and right legs can't even go over his shoulder? You know, so I pretty much fixed that problem. But, but anyways, yeah, stem cells is like the freaking, uh, there's cells that, that pretty much can adapt to any organ. They can form themselves to any other cell there is, you know. So that's pretty much where I got the idea. And I believe I'm done with the leg. So now, um, now, with the, now that we just finished the leg, we're, we're now on the backpack. So this is pretty much the main hub of the mechanical legs. This is one heavy machinery. 
that allows such mechanical legs to operate and when we just subdivided uh, so same concept with the mechanical legs uh, there's a robotic side to this um, backpack I'm gonna call it backpack I don't care what you guys call it um, th there's and there's also an organic side and as you can see I'm starting to sculpt the organic side now so it's pretty much the same kind of detailing as you saw on the legs and you also got the restraint right there in which I will go over soon the restraint is pretty much there to hold the the face mask like literally like face mask it's a mask of a face of someone's face um, and there you go I'm using the mechanical smooth brush it's a custom brush that I downloaded it allows you to not just polish but also polish it in a way where it looks very you know robotic like and there you go you see that you, you can you can now start you can now start to tell where the hard surface will be and where the organic will be based on how I'm sculpting this right now so I'm pretty much just polishing it everywhere and around this time I didn't know what I was going to do for the restraint if I was going to make it out of organic or hard surface um, I actually started out with organic first oh I'm sorry hard surface and then I added flesh tubings on it so now I think I'm using the clay the clay buildup as I did on the mechanical brush um, just going over the details right here these strands of organic material is starting to spread it's actually, it's actually pretty cool you know like like I said this is these are stem cells that are mutated to grow even faster than before so it's like seeing the actual story come to life because me sculpting this makes it look like the stem cells are growing you know <laughs> so it's pretty cool never thought never looked at it that way but yeah now I'm using the well I think I'm still using the clay buildup you can obviously tell if I'm using the clay buildup because of the way the edges are now as you can see here I think I'm using the clay tubes yeah I switched over to clay tubes did the underside you know you can't forget about the underside can't leave a blank and there you go as you can see I didn't use when I when it comes to sculpting high, highly detailed stuff like this my usual attempt or process is to sculpt it symmetrically notice how both sides of this backpack are exactly the same at the moment um, but I think later on I, I disable symmetry and um, you know and pretty much start sculpting it asymmetrically which is important you know the reason why it's important when it comes to sculpting organic stuff is because not everything in life even if you're living or not even animals human beings alike no one is perfect you know there's always a if you measure both of your eyes right now you're not going to get the same measurement for another person you know so symmetry shouldn't really be a concern when it comes to you know sculpting organic stuff of course it is important but later on you really don't want symmetry on your organic stuff because it does it's gonna look artificial instead of natural you know and I believe we subdivided right there um, as you as you guys saw right there I what I did was um, the more polys that you have obviously the more details you guys can do right the problem with that is it's hard it's it's hard it's more it's a lot harder to work with because you have a lot of polygons that you have to work with you know and to prevent if you want to move something in zbrush with polygons the best part to do is to actually go to a lower subdivision level and do your fixing right there because it's a lot better to you know it's a lot better to smooth 
less polys than a lot of polys because you know like i said it's just easier you're dealing with less polys and i believe this is the part where i'm going over everything using the damien standard brush so i'm pretty much adding more details and when i mean details i mean uh, deep crevices um yeah badass so I'm pretty much final we're almost done with the backpack just finalizing what it looks like right here adding more stuff whenever I can imagine if something like this is real like it like would it be possible <laughs> you know mutated stem cells on something robotic and it makes it living you know it's just awesome. What I like to do when it comes to character modeling, since since you're working with CG and not clay, you're pretty much unlimited on resources. So I pretty much went balls out on this character, you know, because it's not just a character; it's a character with a face mask, who's on a freaking mechanical machine. You know, how badass is that? I mean, yeah, you can do that in clay, but it's gonna take you a damn long time, you know, and a lot of money. To buy your clay while doing CG you're freaking unlimited <laughs> you know the only thing that's limiting you is your imagination and I'm dead serious like do you guys see what I mean now the, the advantages of doing CG art compared to tra compared to you know traditional art although traditional art is still the most powerful than digital obviously because it's in real life but you know CG art it has its own advantages as well and this is one of them you know you're unlimited on resources like you can have you can I can sculpt this over and over you know and I have not wasted a single penny but if I do this in clay oh that's gonna take me a while and a lot of um, money to buy the clay so I pretty much went balls out and expect me to go balls out on every single character I do you know it's always good to challenge yourself and here I'm pretty much finalizing the details and I don't know what the hell I'm doing here uh, Alright, so now we reach the main thing of this whole video, and that's actually sculpting the actual character himself. So as you all know, this should be a no-brainer. Um, I'm using placebo for this, the, the placebo mesh that I created on the last video. Um, and we just subdivided. So, in this part, I'm just, you know, roughing out what he looks like. And now that I think of it, you know what? I shouldn't use placebo in every single, you know, character I do. Like, I need to learn how to, to you know, create things from scratch. Because obviously if I get in a job similar to what I'm doing right now, they're going to want me to, you know, create character meshes from scratch. And I'm, you know, I don't want to be afraid to do that because I want to get used to it. And, you know, using placebo every single time will not help me at all. But it's a good starting point, right? You know, so there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a fast, efficient way to create a character. Why would you have to re-sculpt a human mesh when you've already made one in the first place? So why not? But you know, but again, I don't know how it works in the industry, so I can't really um, judge it on that. Uh, the idea that I had for the face, since, since he had uh, an accident, a freak bombing went on during his presentation of his uh, mechanical uh, suit as well as his um, stem cell compound when that explosion exploded uh, we, they didn't really know if it, if it was his own experiments that left them scarred or it was the burns from the explosion but there are rumors that the explosion was actually a chemical explosion. Um, so it was like a biological warfare kind of thing. So that will actually tell a story on how his details will look. So the, the way I wanted him to look when it comes to the face was pretty much all the fluid on his face is just washed out. You know, I don't know if I did a good job on that, but I think I did okay. So think of your face having skin 
but no you know fluids whatsoever so it's pretty much a skull that has skin on top do you guys get how that works so i tried doing that here and holy crap this is fast did i already texture it holy crap okay i guess i did so right now i'm pretty much texturing i'm pretty much um using skin pores and skin textures to cover his whole entire body up and i got the did, did i really just do the details that quick wow okay um but yeah texturing is important as you can see so there's the face notice how it looks like voldemort <laughs> someone told me that in class like two weeks ago or something or last week it looks like a voldemort it does look like voldemort the reason why um i wanted it to look different is because remember this is a chemical burn you know so you don't really have i, I want to make the face so that he doesn't have any um pretty much everything is stuck together you know so with that in mind the nostrils are stuck to the cheeks in a way to an extent so there's pretty much no if you guys look at reference material for actual people who survived burns severe burns notice the details on their face they still have a face oh hell yeah they still have a face it's just that all the definition is gone it's just wiped out that's why they look like that so i pretty much did that here and now we reach to the part where i'm pretty much uh sculpting the pants so if you guys are probably wondering how i got the pants in the first place so um i don't know if you guys saw it but i masked out the lower legs and then i inverted it and then i did uh, a simple extract in zbrush and allowed me to do this and that's pretty much how i make clothing you know so right here i'm trying to do wrinkles for the pants to make it look authentic it will look even more authentic with the texture that i will be using later on in the texturing stage of this video so notice how he looks really good a heavily scarred um, man who's a genius you know he happens to wear awesome jeans <laughs> and i'm trying to sculpt the back pocket here but i think i took it out because i didn't really like that did i i'm not sure i can't remember you know so doing some wrinkles right there I believe I used the crumble, the, the crumble brush. I don't know if that's the right brush to use when it comes to wrinkles, but it looks fine to me. You know. Yeah, I think I. I can't remember if I took out the back pockets. I remember I did. Cause it didn't really look good. Oh, I don't think I did it. Hmm, but um, yeah, there's the pants all rugged and There's also the finished body of the character which I did somehow fairly quickly. I don't remember I don't I think I think ZBrush crashed and I lost all that data to Do this to do the uh, sculpting for that because I, I did not do the details that fast. That's ridiculous Which is quite unfortunate But yeah, here's the pants all finished so now we are now so now we're sculpting the the harness so the harness was something that i came up with at the last second when sculpting because i realized how is he staying on you know what is he like duct tape the back of the mechanical piece hell no so i had to i have to figure out a way to do that and i said oh what about harness with rivets on it you know it will add more to the aesthetic of this cre of this um this serial killer so same method with the pants, I just simply masked out the area and then did a extract. And then just, you know, added some details right here. I'm bulking up this one big harness. Because remember, it has to hold them. So I have to make it look bulky. And it's, it's a pretty thin piece too. Look at all that detail in the body. It sucks that you guys didn't see me sculpt it. I don't think. So you got all the blisters, the disgusting stuff. I used an alpha for the custom alpha. You can, that's what's cool about ZBrush. You can pretty much take any image and turn it into a texture, an alpha, or something, you know? 
That's the best part about ZBrush. So I'm pretty much, uh, right now I'm just tapering the edges of this of this um, harness because it can't be just flat you know I want it to have a, a particular look and aesthetic to it and there you go and I believe this is the part where I start to put rivets on it when you guys are doing alphas you know when you guys are stamping your creature in ZBrush be sure you're at least on subdivision 7 or 8 because the alphas will not look really good if you're in a lower subdivision obviously because you have less polys you know and there you go see that it's like magic it's like pop 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 you see rivets going everywhere they, they don't have to be rivets they can be like you know some sort of they're just there to make it look like a uh a freaking um harness and this is the part where i texture it too I don't know if you guys can see it, what I'm, but um, I'm adding, you know, the same texture to the skin. And the reason why is because, if, as you all know, leather is pretty much skin. It's, it's the skin of a cow. And they both have similar textures, believe it or not. If you don't believe me, look at your belt right now. It has the same texture as, as, your, um, as your knee. That makes sense. So I don't know what those are. They just, they just look pretty cool at a distance. And there you go. That's the belt. All finished. And this is the part where I pretty much cringe in excitement. Because this is the part that I've been waiting on sculpting. Notice how I'm not using I notice how I'm not using symmetry. Oh, I, I'm, not, I'm using symmetry now for this face mask. But the face mask is the best one. It's the best... Um, thing that I'm sculpting at the moment because you know you're designing the the mask of this serial killer the reason why he wears this is he's it's because he's ashamed that he can't be himself now you know and again I will go over the story at the end but you know he wears he's he cuts the, the faces off of people because he's ashamed of what happened to him so I just subdivide right there this is looking really good. I don't know about you guys. Adding some wrinkles and I believe I'm adding some stretch marks. Cause remember, this is getting stretched over his face. So you have to think a bit. How will that look like? You know? Bulked up the cheeks. And I was also keeping in mind here that this doesn't have a bone. Remember, this is just a face. Like like literally just the face, like the flesh. So there wouldn't be any bone structures or anything like that. So I try to make it look very fabricy, you know. Added more wrinkles. You guys should see what I do when I texture this later on, like the coloring. Oh, you guys are gonna like that. So I'm just adding that in. Oh, oh yeah. Also, notice how there's eyes on this now. Placebo um, mesh didn't have eyes because you can always add eyes on ZBrush. You know. So just adding some wrinkles right there. This is really looking badass. It's like the future it's like the futuristic version of Ed Gein. In fact it is. It's a play on words. If you guys know if you guys know the name of this guy, which is pretty much the name of the video itself. Edward Gennard. Ed Gein, Edward Gennard. So I don't know if any of you guys will, will uh, caught that, but it's pretty much how I got the name of that. So add some eye bags right there, make it look nice and wrinkly. Can't be see like the, the problem with this is you can't make it smooth because it, when it's smooth, it just doesn't look right. So and if you guys are like me, I like doing details such as wrinkles. It just adds more to whatever it is you're doing. Looks really badass. I say that a lot, now that I mention it. Badass. I believe we're at, I think we're on subdivision 6 or 7, based on how smooth the surface is. I think we're on 6. And it's getting really detailed as time goes on. That's just how you work when it comes to ZBrush or Mudbox, pretty much. 
as you work up the subdivision levels you have to redo the same details that you just did to maintain the quality and mass and as you saw there I pretty much subtracted some details out added more wrinkles I'm telling you guys I'm I'm really heavy on wrinkles like it's just one of the thing it's one of my favorite things to do it's actually quite difficult to do in, in actual clay but here in ZBrush it's easy <laughs> of course it's easy so I'm adding more see they're not just wrinkles like you have to realize there's a flow to this because if, if, if this thing is being stretched over his face, you have to think a bit about where the wrinkles will be, you know? And how are they going to look. And... And yep, there you go. Look closely. I'm texturing it. it. Looks really nice. And now we have finally reached the third stage of this video. The first stage being the basic mesh and the second stage being sculpting and then the third stage is being is pretty much coloring it okay so notice here in zbrush you guys have no idea how much i learned from making this character not by sculpting wise but zbrush technical wise um because i displayed some techniques that i never actually did before like for example as you guys saw a couple seconds ago isolating the different pieces i didn't know you can do that and if you guys don't know how to do that it's actually control shift and click on the mesh that you want to single out and that'll actually help you but anyways yeah i'm i'm in the coloring stage uh, notice what i just did i pretty much coated the metal plating black or not black like dark gray first and i'm pretty much going to go over that and you know i'm be I, and, and i'm coloring the organic stuff pink you know muscle so I believe there are two colors right now. And I'm pretty much using masking too. I'm masking out the organic spaces so I won't contaminate the the metal. And I wanna show you guys and I wanna show you guys a tip. When you guys are doing any kind of detail, when you're done with the, the coloring of the detail, be sure to use a a lighter color of the same hue. And that will pretty much pop out the details. And that's what I'm doing right here. Notice I'm notice how I'm Notice how I'm adding like a light, light pink on, you know, on on most of the strands of muscle, as you see here. It just makes it pop out. And same thing with the crevices. You would obviously use a darker color of the same hue as I'm doing right here. So it looks a bit, you know, real, you know. A real painting is consisted of many layers, not just two colors or three colors. So you have to keep going over and over. So see what I'm doing here? I'm going over the crevices with a darker color and it just looks really, really good. And same thing with the top of the details. Make sure to go over using a lighter color. And believe me, your details will pop out as seen here. I kid you not, I'm not lying. Here's proof. This is how to make your details look good. At least for me. I don't know how you guys do it. Painting is really fun, like, you know, it's just adding color, it brings it to life. And I still have to UV this. You guys will not actually see me UV because UVing is a bit boring, especially if I record it. Yeah, so it's a bit pointless. But this is purely UV'd. And here's the part where I color the metal. Or did I or did I already do that? I think I did. Oh there you go, see I'm starting to add blood stains. Not blood stains, but like a like a red tint on the metal because remember this is stem cells that mutated onto metal so there are actually some areas where some of it will actually start to grow as well and notice how I added blood splatters right there I will actually add better blood splatters on the pants you know the metal later on you guys don't actually see me do it because I, I did at the last second unfortunately but take a close look at the metal piece of this mechanical leg notice how it's not just one color it's actually a lighter color in the corner and you know whatnot and here i'm pretty much just repeating the same process you know like darkening up the crevices 
light, lighting up the tops of the details and it just adds so much more see see that now it looks like flesh hell yeah i achieved my goal And I believe we are done painting the mechanical leg. We're about to move on now to the backpack, which is pretty much the same process. That looks dis that looks disgustingly beautiful, and I love it. So now we're on the backpack. Same concept. Notice how I started off with a pink color. I coated the, the whole entire model with pink. And I just worked my way off of that. So I'm pretty much doing. See what I mean? When you when you guys are doing metal, metal is not just one color. Well, it actually is, but <laughs> when you're doing something like this, you have to use more than one color to really bring it out, as seen right here. And same thing with. See, add dark colors to the crevices, and it will pop out. Same concept, just applied differently here, since it's a different mesh. See how good that is? See, see how awesome that looks? Bam. All that disgusting stuff right there. And I notice how the pins at the back of at the uh I didn't color the pins to make it look, you know, more metal. So it will actually hold up the the face mask. And I'm adding some splatters to so it's a smooth transition from metal to organic. And now we have come to the body. Notice how from what it looks like it's already been colored. Like right there, see that? I actually used a um a plugin in ZBrush itself called Z App Link. What it allows you to do is it integrates Photoshop into your model in ZBrush. And you can pretty much do whatever it is you want to do in Photoshop to the texture of this model. So notice what I did to the hands. If you guys saw, I actually used someone's real hand and and pretty much projected it onto the 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 hand, you know, as well as the face. So now this is the real detail. This is the part where I didn't use Z App Link no more. I'm actually using. I'm actually painting it now. So to make it look more inf infected and burned up. Notice how I'm going it o I'm going over the infected areas with pink because remember this is skin that's been stressed that's been tampered with so i'm pretty sure you won't get the same exact skin tone and you see how beautiful it looks now so same concept um i'm applying a lighter color to the top of the details notice how it looks like there's scars now see that i'm adding white in particular areas and it just brings it out that's the beauty of color this looks so badass in ZBrush. Remember, this is 50 million polys right now. Everything is 50 million polys, so obviously it will look good. When it comes to Maya, on the other hand, you have to make your normal maps awesome. So you can retain all that detail that you just did here in ZBrush. But yeah, that's how I got that realistic human look to this model. Because I actually used human references and painted it onto the model. Look at that. Look at the hands. And then that nice butt. Everything about it looks good. I don't know about you guys. And I'm just having a blast right here, I can tell. Because I'm just like moving it all the way. <laughs> you know. And there you go, that's him. Oh, what the hell did I just do here? Oh, I'm adding blood splatter. Yeah, see, this is the part where I add blood. I created my own alpha on ZBrush. Now we're done with the body. We're doing the pants now. And as you all saw, that split second, I pretty much UV'd the, the, uh, the pants using UV Master in ZBrush. And I'm actually using denim textures to paint this. And it looks real nice. It looks like the actual thing. <laughs> and later on, I splatter with blood. Yeah, there you go. See, blood, blood, blood. This guy is really not a this guy is really messy when it comes to killing people. So it actually tells a story. And now we move on to the harness. Nothing special here, just brown with different, you know, tints of brown, 
went over it with dark brown you know it's that's a trick to coloring stuff you're pretty much using the same color just differently in some way you know and the part that I didn't like about this was actually painting each and every one of the rivets <laughs> see from when you where you guys are standing it looks probably it looks easy because it's, it's in time lapse but in real time this took a while and notice how I'm adding blood right here as well everything has to be splattered with blood because this guy is a pretty violent character so now we are painting the the face mask notice how fast that was and notice how it has a realistic um, human like color to it that's the that's because I took it into Z app link the plugin for ZBrush same thing with the body so notice how I actually took someone's real face and put it on this model that's a good technique it's really awesome look how realistic that is and I add some blood too and notice here that I'm actually um, doing Z app link on the eyes so it's a bit fast but what I'm actually doing is that's all I'm pretty much doing is stamping a texture onto the eye and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys into a secret um, the eyes themselves are do, do you guys wanna know where I got the eyes from I got them from the same site in which I order my full full eye contacts from what I should do is take a screenshot of the pictures of the eyes like the, eye, the, the contact lens for the eyes and I pretty much use that to stamp the eyeballs to my character models. That's what I do, you know. But yeah, that's my secret. That's that's how I got the uh, eyes from. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last part of my character model. This is the last part of every single character modeling video that I will do. And this is pretty much showing off the finished character model. Uh, notice how this is in ZBrush using the turntable tool so that's how he's rotating everything's all finished look how awesome this is here's a close-up this looks really badass like oh my god look at that so this is why i love cg art you can do stuff like this it's just insane and uh and i believe at this time everything was uv'd so i used uv layout to uv the body while everything else i just did uv master on ZBrush but yeah you guys I did the total poly count in this thing and guess how much it is it's like over 50, 50 million like around 55 million this is 55 million polygons even my laptop can't handle it it can handle it it's just that it stutters you know so it was a bit of a hassle to get this thing up and going but yeah this is the turntable in ZBrush this is what it looks like in ZBrush um, around this time I did the export tool so I pretty much export everything in mid res so I can put, put pretty much put it back in Maya and I also exported back obviously the textures and also the normal maps what the normal maps is if you guys don't know it's, it's pretty much the details of your model it takes the information of the bump of the model and transfers it, and transfers it onto a map and uh, you can pretty much apply that map to your character on Maya with the low poly mesh and that's how you retain that quality of the details because let's be real for a second you can't you cannot import a 50 million polygon mesh to Maya because it will just crash okay so now what you guys are looking at here this is the Maya turntable for uh, for this for this character that I, that I created Skinner Notice how the turntable is actually easing in. See how see how it slows down. That's actually my fault. As you all know, I'm not an animator, and it does that by default. When you guys are doing animation in Maya, it te it eases it a bit. It it eases the motion a bit. So that's how it gets that. And I'm using and I'm rendering using Mental Ray, and I'm using SSS on the organic stuff. And notice how beautiful it looks. And this is the ambient occlusion. I learned how to do the shader by myself. Like I had to research it and stuff. And it was pretty hard to do. But it's pretty simple actually. Once you learn it. But it's hard. It's kind of hard to figure out on your own. The ambient occlusion is pretty much the shadow. It's a particular type of shadow. In which it brings out the detail on your model. And this is it right here. This is pretty much the, the non-colored version of my model. With the details. 
So you guys might think this is 50 million polygons. It is not. This is not 50 million polygons. Uh, this is, you know, this is mid-res. So I bet I think there's like 4,000 polygons in this. So yeah, that's that. Uh, that's that for the ambient occlusion. Look how beautiful it looks. There's actually some screenshots of this. So now um, this is the part where I show you guys some screenshots, not screenshots, but uh, the still images of these renders. So this again, this is in Maya using Mental Ray. Look how beautiful it looks. Everything, all the details are there. They've been preserved. Um, this is via low mesh. Uh, so the, the details are, are pretty much on a low uh, poly mesh model. So look, look at that. Look closely at the joint of the backpacks. It looks like salmon, <laughs> as my mom said. But yeah, this is the final, you know, this is the final um, piece. Uh, this is the beauty of 3D modeling, is actually seeing your character in Maya or 3ds Max or whatever 3D package you guys use. You guys have to realize when you're doing something in ZBrush, it, you can't, it can't just stay in ZBrush. Because all it is is just a sculpture. No one can use it. Um, you know, you have to learn how to export it out uh, in, a, in a low mesh form, uh, in a low mesh format, and then pretty much bring back the detail using the normal maps that you generated, as well as the texture maps. You know, that's the trick. That's the magic of 3D modeling. You can't just sculpt in ZBrush and sit there, and be proud of it. You know, you have to bring it into Maya or something or somewhere. Because once you have it on Maya, guess what you can do? You can rig it. And once it's rigged, you can animate it so that it can be used in a live action sequence or an animation. Or even better, a game or a movie or a movie. You know? And that's and that's what you need to do with, with characters. So again, again, this is you guys are looking at at fifty million polys worth of detail right here. And you know, the normal maps preserve that. So, I believe I believe it's around four thousand polys in Maya. I think I'm not sure. It may be more, but that still counts as low as a low mesh. And uh, now that I think of it, I should totally start doing wireframe renders so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But maybe in the next video, the next character modeling video. But you know, yeah, that's the that's the the. This is the render for for Maya using Mental Ray. So all the details are there. I'm gonna keep repeating that. It's just it's just amazing how much what you can do with CG art. All that sculpting that I just did are preserved on the normal maps, and the low mesh work that I did is still there. You know that's how you get this beautiful render and this beautiful model in Maya. All right. So hopefully hopefully you guys get an idea of what I'm trying to say here when it comes to rendering. But that's it for Maya. So you guys, what you guys just saw is the turntable for both the raw sculpture in ZBrush, as well as the more finesse model in Maya. Now, what I'm going to show you is something totally different. Okay. So you guys are probably wondering how I did the awesome intro at the beginning of this video. Well. What you guys are looking at here is a program called Morma. Is it Morma Set? Morma Set Toolbag. Marma Set Toolbag. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is a program that was introduced to me by my fellow classmate. He's also the group leader in my production team class in the Art Institute of Los Angeles. Um, he pretty much introduced me to this program because he knows that I want to be a character modeler. And he wants to... He he showed me a way to present my characters, and this program is called Marmoset Toolbag. And what you guys are looking at here, these aren't renders, believe it or not. This is all happening in real time, and I'm going to show you guys a demo of what I mean by that in a sec. So again, uh, this is the third part of my of this whole section of this video. I'm pretty much showing you guys the finished model in different ways. The third way is pretty much Marmoset Toolbag. Uh, it's a quick program to use. It's fairly simple. The, the primary purpose of it is to show off your models in a quickly, timely manner. Okay, this does not include render timing, like render times. 
you're not even rendering anything like there's nothing to render this is all happening in real time uh, notice how you know what let's just go to the program okay <laughs> Alright guys, so you have finally made it to the end of this long character model video. <laughs> um, I congratulate you if you've watched it throughout the whole entire thing. Uh, so now I'm pretty much going to demo you guys through this awesome program that I just discovered through a friend. Um, this is Marmoset Toolbag. The program's purpose is primarily, to, is primarily to present your characters in a very efficient and yet very stylized way so as you can see here is Skinner uh, this is the low res model with the normal maps and obviously the texture maps already on uh, notice how we're on a very dark environment here and uh, what you can actually do with this program is you can add a lot of things in the scene like for example lights and the background as well uh, image based lighting it's a visual effects type of uh, method in which in which you use an image and the model itself w will actually match the lighting based on the radiance of the particular area of the image so it pretty much replicates the lighting and as you can see it's doing that right now so notice how this is a uh, a huge sky of um, a huge photo of a sky, a dark sky, and the moonlight is right there. Uh, here, let me remove the light real quick. How do I... Or never mind, it's not doing anything anyways. Um, but the, yeah, the light is right here somewhere. And notice what I can do with this program. Are, are you guys ready? Okay, check us out. Uh, sky rotation. See how I'm... See how it actually affects the model in real time? And I'm not, and I don't have to render a single thing, unlike in Maya. So both programs have their own advantages. Obviously, the program that I'm using right now, Marmoset Toolbag, the advantage of this is that you can see all the details of your sculpture without rendering. Uh, and you can pretty much add lights, such as the flicker that I had going on, like right here. See how it's flickering? Here, let me turn off the sky. Uh, light, sky brightness, all the way down. See that? Look how creepy this is. This is how I made the intro to the video that you guys are watching right now. See that? Everything is in real time, ladies and gentlemen. See, see how I'm moving the light and it's affecting the model shadows and whatnot. That's awesome. I believe this is how video games work. I think. I'm not sure. But yeah, see how real time this is? I've never played with anything like this before. That's why I'm going crazy about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this program has its advantages and disadvantages as well. The advantages being you can see your model in high res. Um, you can see all the details and whatnot. This program is fairly easy to use. It's, it's user friendly. The UI is fairly simple to use. Everything is in real time, like I said a lot uh, before. Uh, there's only there's two disadvantages that I can come up with right now for this for this program and one of them is actually this is this program is not actually finished you know I think they're still updating it you know it's an ongoing project and I feel like there's a lot of things technical wise that they can add to actually speed up uh, the process of using this program such as I don't know holding control or shift to select more than one object at once so you can apply it a single material to them because what I had to do is open up every single apply every single material to each to each uh, um, object that I have in this character when I mean by object I mean you know the, the different pieces you know like the backpack the flesh joint as seen right here the, the mechanical back piece or the mechanical leg on the left side you know these are all separate objects and I have to apply the same UV map to them when I can just you know hold shift and do that they don't have that feature unfortunately so I have to do things manually and I believe there's a bug where I open up the scene and I have to pretty much reload all the materials which doesn't make sense because I did save the mesh and the materials so I don't know what happened but you know these disadvantages to the program these aren't enough to help to stop me from using this you know the reason why I use this is, is because you can do so much with it you know, look at this. 
Like, this is awesome. This is the same way I present my masks, you know? So I, I usually have the light right here so that the light shines over the eye so you can't really see the eye. You know, that's how I present my masks. And, I, and it's cool how I can recreate that in a CG way here on my laptop using my 3D modeling or my 3D models, you know? So look at that. So that's that. This is this is Marmoset tool bag. Believe it or not, this is only sixty sixty dollars. I thought it would be like worth more. So I ended up buying it. So it's awesome because you know this is this is a professional program to you know use when you want to present your characters to your creative director or someone. You know, this is a really interesting program to use. And for the characters that I'll be making in the near future, oh, this program is the best when it comes to presenting. But of course, I also have to learn how to how to present and render my high quality models via Maya, okay? So it's not just gonna be this program. This program is just for fun when it comes to presenting, you know? But the real presentation comes in rendering Maya because I, I do have to learn how to render, you know, and rig. So these are like the things that come with character modeling. If you want to be a character modeler or CG artist, you have to know how to design, you know, rig. You have to know, you have to know all these other things. You know, it's like mask making. You can't consider yourself a mask maker if, you, if, the, if the only thing you know how to do is sculpt. You know, you have to learn how to make a mold for your mask. You have to know how to paint. You know, you have to, do, you have to know all this stuff. And that's pretty much the same concept as a character modeler. Or a CG artist, you know, there's a, a couple of things that you need to know as well, not, not just modeling. Okay, so that's that'll be it for this video, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Um, again, these videos are designed to be long because these are commentary videos. You just saw this character get created from scratch all the way to the finish. Okay, that's why it's long. And uh, you also, sh you, you also, you guys also see this character in its finished state. You know, with the renders. Marmoset tool bag stuff like this what I'm doing right now So you guys see this character from it's from day one all the way to the finished day, whatever that is And that's why this this video is long and um And that'll be it guys. Hope you guys enjoy it again the character bio. Oh, that's right I have to, I have to read the character bio. Well, you know what you guys can actually read that in your own time <laughs> I've totally forgot to do the damn it but yeah, the character bio is in the is in the description of this video as always. Same th same thing as my masks and their me metaphoric symbolism and whatnot. But in the next video, I will read to you guys the story because some of you guys don't like to read, and I just read it to you guys. But in this case, I forgot, and you know, I really don't want to make this video any longer than it sh than it already is. So you guys can read it in your own time. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to read, right? But yeah, that'll be it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, uh, share this video, comment on it, or whatever, like, subscribe. You know, I'm just repeating stuff that I just said. Uh, but yeah, seriously. Um, if you like the art that I do, please follow me on Twitter. I update you guys frequently on Twitter, mostly every day, whenever I make art. That would be twitter.com slash evilsaw13. And if you guys want to check out my website, in which it is not finished yet as of now uh, as of um june 8th is june 8th 2013 um it's still not finished yet i will finish it this year uh that'll be triple w triple w dot one and please check that out and if you guys haven't already please like my fan page that'll be facebook.com slash one freak show caparis did i get that right yeah okay <laughs> It's a lot of links that I have to remember. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it, guys. Thank you for watching. And again, more character modeling videos coming soon. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Not just masks. Uh-uh. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not your typical average mask maker anymore. I've become something a lot more diverse. Alright? So that'll be it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.